Hello everyone, Mr. Happy here and welcome to State of the Realm. It's a weekly Final Fantasy XIV podcast bringing you all sorts of news and information and today a little bit of help with crafting. Don't worry, after last week's episode you'll be happy to see who our guest host is. So joining me first and foremost is the co-host, you know, he's been here every week. His name is Samuel Sly, aka Sly the Fox, aka Sly, aka Gray Fox, aka you my boy Blue, how you doing man? my boy blue how you doing happy i'm, I'm glad we're having this show because uh, i know i needed an intervention an intervention but you do too you do you really do no i need an intervention of a different kind we'll talk about that later but, <laughs> and then we have our guest for this show you know him as mr crafty himself and he gave me that idea just before the show started so it's his own fault his name is mithri menafil how you doing today mithri welcome to the show I'm all good. Thank you for having me. Well, thank you for coming, man, because I know you like to come by the show pretty often, and you probably saw we had some unfavorable things to say about crafting last week or the last seven <laughs> weeks. But we want to learn more, and we want everyone else watching to learn a little bit more about crafting in this week's episode. So we had to have the crafting man himself, Mithri, on the show. Thank you so much. Also, I'm pointing the wrong way, but that's besides the point. So um, we have a lot of things to talk about on today's show uh because not a lot of people are super into or super knowledgeable about crafting so the way we're going to break this apart is we're going to briefly explain crafting the way it operates now you know benefits you know ways to go about it comparisons to other games and then we're going to talk about what to do going into the expansion how you can really learn to get into crafting make some money do all that fun stuff you two ready to go for the show i'm ready absolutely all right. Well, Mithri, you are our guest, so I will draw. I will draw the first topic to you. So, Final Fantasy XIV is commonly compared to other games in a lot of aspects, but one thing that is very much different in its uh, in its art is its crafting. It's a fully flushed out system with abilities, quality modifiers. You know, the ability to really control every aspect of it. So, compared to the other games that you've played, the crafting in Final Fantasy XIV. Well, um, I actually started MMOs in Final Fantasy XI, like a lot of us did, and crafting in that game was definitely a challenge, that's for sure, because I found in XI it was very much like just set up all the right conditions, like say be facing the right way during the right lunar phase, during the right day of the week, and then hope and pray for high quality. And um, crafting in World of Warcraft, because I played World of Warcraft for many years as well, was very much just get the mats and press create all. So in this game, crafting is so much more, like you said, more fun, more challenging, more balanced, and the ability to share lots of different skills from different classes adds a whole new dimension to crafting, which I've never seen in any game before so I would say crafting in this game is definitely the best I've come across I mean I couldn't agree more I played 11 in World of Warcraft and 11's crafting was I couldn't I couldn't take it man it was just it was so much RNG World of Warcraft there it was almost like it wasn't even a system there it was almost an afterthought it felt like but this game has luckily really flushed it out so now that we've compared it a bit to previous MMOs, I mean, there are tons of other ones we could compare it to, but we need to keep this show timely. Let's explain the crafting system as it goes now. So um, the first big thing we need to talk about is entry level. What is important to actually being a crafter? Now, Sly, you're in the process of leveling your crafters right mm -hmm. now. How's that going? <laughs> um, as I said, I'm... I've gotten all to 15 except for armor. Armor right now is at 11, like a little bit before 12, so I just got to craft one more thing on the log, and I'll be at 12. But Are you doing yeah. that during the show? Because you're looking away from the screen right now. No, I, I'm looking at my screen right now. I, my <laughs> controller is not in my hand. It's right there. But, yeah, I was doing it before the show. And, um, yeah, it's been an experience. Like, I've been doing – this is, like, the only thing I've been doing since Sunday is crafting. Well, I notice you're taking everything to 15 specifically, and that's the first big thing about crafting in Final Fantasy 14 is you need multiple jobs leveled, even to be efficient in a single craft, which is kind of strange because not a lot of people are used to having that requirement across all their classes. But I mean, it's kind of shared with the idea that, you know, battle classes have the same thing. You know, they need to get cross class skills. 
So is this really a good or a bad thing when compared to other MMOs? Mithri? Well, um, they, they introduce you to it gently. So by the time you get to level 15, you can only actually share free abilities. So there isn't a need, to, for example, to get all eight of them done at the same time. But the reason I would recommend just getting all eight of them done at the same time is to make sure that you share the same crafting gear so you don't have lots of different sets of gear along the way. And so on. I just, like I said, make it easier for yourself in the longer run. So, and, um, but because you can share abilities, um, that was my motivation from the beginning, like when A Realm Reborn came out, for me to want to level up everything side by side to begin with, because that made me feel like this is the way it's been designed, this is what we're supposed to do. So I sort of read between the lines, sort of thing, of, of their uh, game design. Yeah, I mean, th it, that's just one of the multiple things that you really have to do to get into crafting. Uh, but as you said, leveling them all alongside each other. Same goes with the battle classes. So I can relate to you. I mean, you know I'm not the biggest of crafters. Yeah. Yeah, three, so <laughs> you really got to explain this to me from like the get-go. But it is really relatable to the battle classes in that sense, as you just explained it. Other things we have to think about now, and I think this is a big reason why Sly and myself never really got into it, Mithri, is things like the melding process, you know, getting all the gear up, the level of investment required, mm -hmm. unlocking the new master books, which requires, you know, having all of those classes leveled and just, it's a lot of investment into it. I mean, Sly, you're getting them all to 15, but are you really going to? go the full nine yards before heaven's word and get them all to 50 if it even ends up mattering in the and see, and that was the question i wanted to pose to mithri is it possible with the time frame that we have right now is it possible for me to get all of my cla crafter classes 250 before heaven's board yeah absolutely it is okay. i mean I'm, I'm even going out of my way to make a new players crafting series along the way to help people get there i mean i'm trying to show people that it really is quick because the first time as with everything in life you know the first time you do it it's a bit slow but then after you've then repeated the same thing another seven times it gets quicker and quicker and quicker and quicker so um you know you get used to it you start learning better tricks and so on you start mastering your rotations as well because the general advice for crafting is the more high quality the more experience you get and as you keep practicing your rotations you will get the perfect rotations get as much high quality as so on and just do it yourself quicker and quicker fair enough i mean yeah. it's still that cost that cost though like yeah the time to level everything is a big deal but the cost it is i i mean i know the phrase you got to spend money to make money but that's as a lot of the of money. way the game operates right now that's almost hard to do to spend all that money to actually make your money back unless you are super knowledgeable about the stuff isn't it well i mean with with because there's two approaches to it you can either power level which is the simple, the, you know, the burn your way straight to 50 as quickly as you possibly can, regardless like of the way. cost. Yeah. <laughs> or there's the other way, which I'm calling, like, let's call it the new player way, the, the people who just don't have money, don't have the resources to do that sort of thing. And to be honest, if you take your time and you do it that sort of way, um, you could actually be making money the whole way. You shouldn't actually be losing money. So it really depends which approach you take. And I would say that there's, what, left just under two months to go until the expansion? If you mm -hmm. started today, you could still do the slow method until you could be level 50 everything before the expansion launches. And all along the way, you're going to have to deal with some of the other things that uh, comes with crafting on multiple classes, things like managing inventory space. So <laughs> this, is, this is why you need an intervention. <laughs> no, this is okay. why I needed one before, like, weeks ago okay so here's the thing um <laughs> it's easy to hoard items in final fantasy 14 because it's so there's so many common items in this game so many different crafting components that managing your inventory space can be a little bit of a problem uh, just a little bit i mean it's it, it, it's it's not like it got that out that far out of hand right sly i mean we were just talking about this before the show started we were just like it's like yeah i got i got some issues here and there uh it it's gotten out of hand for me um, <laughs> recently in the past and like even while I'm crafting, but I learn to one, you know, sell the stuff that, you know, isn't going to get a lot on the market. Just merchant it, just give it to a merchant. Everything else you can possibly put on the market, make your profit back and it's the circle of life. 
it's really circle it's, of it's, life. That's that's what it is. You're making. I, I your... missed that. I missed that in the Lion King. I'm sorry. I... Like I don't remember that <laughs> the crafting being part of that of that movie. Mithri, you're somebody who probably doesn't need an intervention as much as Sly and myself with inventory space. So inventory space. We get two retainers. Is it worth it to just? manage the two retainers you have or would you recommend you actually go out of your way and rent that extra retainer space on the mog station um if you become the full-time crafter then yeah you will you will really really need it it will it'll be out of necessity um you can survive with two retainers absolutely but your life will just be so much harder than it needs to be and um like what i try i try and do a minimum approach so i try to every day make sure that i'm clearing out these vendor gear from my retainers and from my uh, space just to make sure that um, like I've always got space to craft but one thing I have found especially when it comes to retainers is that one of my retainers is al already half full of like glamour gear and armor stuff that I just can't put onto my armoire so I found that really, in theory, you should be renting at least one other retainer if you're a full-time crafter, if not both. That's, that's my opinion, at least. Yeah, and it's what? It's like $2 a month for just the one extra retainer. I mean, if you're paying the increased, uh, you know, the multiple characters one anyway, on top of having more characters per server, which we'll talk about a little bit later if that's going to be a beneficial thing to do going forward, uh, you also have, you know, at that point, it's like paying for the one character on the server, you're just instead paying for the eight characters plus a retainer every month. So it's almost like you're not even really losing money to some degree. Um, so with that, those, those are like the big problems people usually have coming into the crafting system in Final Fantasy XIV. But the big question that I see in everyone's chat, Mithri's chat, Sly's chat, Miztech's chat, it doesn't matter where you are. This is pro these are the biggest question is, is it worth doing now? Whether or not they're talking about going towards the expansion, worth doing now. And Mithri, there's actually a conversation that uh, was had over Skype, and you said there are five main reasons to craft right now. Whether or not these will apply later, we'll talk about. But I want you to go through a couple of reasons, P pick the ones that are biggest for you, and then we'll kind of just throw the rest in there so everyone's aware of them. Yeah, I mean, for me, the, I'll say the biggest reason to get into crafting is for that independence, you know. So not having to rely on the market board, not having to be upset when a new patch comes out and everything gets bought out and relisted for 50k each or even, even if it's worth like 10 gil. You know, that sort of, the independence, so I would say, is the biggest thing. But also as well, being able to repair your gear for next to nothing, even during combat, so that's a big thing as well because there has been times when I've been doing like a dungeon or extremes or coil or whatever and a piece of gear breaks and I'm like oh whoops and then I just oh, right click repair okay done whatever I don't have to worry about it and so on and as well um, you know it's also the fact that it's not just a case of avoiding high price on the market board it's also about you know making your own profit you know saving towards your own house or things like that and as well it's the, like I said, it, more about the independent stuff. It's like, for example, when they released the Zodiac quest so that we could, you know, we needed those high quality turn ins to finish off the Zodiac weapon, you know, all those high quality things. Like, um, you had to, you could either craft it yourself, it cost about, let's say, 10k at the most to craft them yourself, or you could pay another crafter or another player 120k to make it for you. So it's, how do you, you know, it, it, it's up to you which approach you would take. I mean, in terms of now, I mean, those would be the reasons why I would do it right now, is just to basically be independent and to just, so it's an investment to make your cost in the future minimal. Yeah, and you know, despite all those good reasons you just named, it seems like a lot of people still need more incentive to do it. Like, I don't, I don't truly understand it. I, I mean... We could talk about the processes of leveling for, you know, the burning of leave quests. Uh, but those are all good reasons, everyone. I mean, you don't even need to get them to 50, right, for repairing. You just need to get them to 40 even, even if that was your only motivation. You don't even need to get them all the way to 50, right? Yeah, that's correct. I don't have any of them, so I'm actually asking. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, it's at level 40, you, you should be able to. If you're level 40 everything, you'll be able to repair every item in the game. See? There you go, everyone. Nice. So, with all that information, 
The next question is, does any of that even matter going towards the expansion? Does not, not just the five reasons, but all that stuff, going through the melding process, unlocking your new master books, leveling everything to 50. So let's break down some of the individual points and talk about those. We're going to have to expand upon them a little bit more. But since we're again talking about leveling and we know that <laughs> Sly is just <laughs> resisting the urge to pick up his controller and keep doing it mid-show. Mm -hmm. I see that's what you're, you look like you're holding your controller, like you're leaning forward on the couch. And it is right next to me. It's right next to me. See, it's right here. Now it's already in his hand, guys. Now we, just, we just made it possible. Now he's going to do it. So having multiple jobs leveled. Now, the level cap's being increased to 60, and unlike, you know, a lot of games do have an increase in maximum skill level, Final Fantasy XI being one of the, uh, not one of the, uh, you know, what's the word I'm looking for? Not examples, what's the other one? Exemptions, that's the word I'm looking for. Two X words. Um, is it really worth it to level them all to 50 now with some of the things they've announced? And furthermore, in the expansion, do you think it's going to be worth leveling them all to 60? Anyone? Yeah, well, in my opinion, it is uh, worth leveling them to 50 now because it just means that when the expansion comes out, you can concentrate on expansion stuff, like the new leveling, the, the new recipes, and new everything. Because you know, I've been playing MMOs now for <clears throat> more than 10 years, and it kind of ruins the enjoyment when all this new content has come out and you're still doing the old stuff. So I would say it's a good idea to get them to 50. But also the other reason as well, a good reason to get them to 50 now, is because right now the market board, for example, is completely stuffed with all of the materials you could ever dream of in order to level yourself up. But that might not be true in the expansion. Like if people can be running around, you know, Western Corpus and all of these new zones in the expansion, why would they go back to, say, Costa del Sol to do gathering? You know, so the certain supplies of certain materials might start to go down and certain prices might go up. So now is the time, in my opinion, to get it done before some of the prices become maybe a, more expensive, basically. Good reason. Uh, one other thing, something that's really, really... And these, these two things kind of lug them together. Uh, Sly, I want to hear your thoughts on this. Getting to a four-star crafter right now, and I mean, along the way, obviously, unlocking your, your master books, that, to me, just... That seems kind of pointless. At the, like, that's what I've been telling people. Is like, D don't even bother. Just get it to 50. Worry about the expansion later. Just don't even worry about it. What do you think, Sly? Are you looking at it from a cost versus, like, a cost slash reward kind of thing? Because I think it, in the end, it'll be worth it for what you'll be able to do. Uh, going back to um, what Mithri was saying on his five points, um, being able to, one, be independent. And two, another thing I want to do is just be able to help my FC out. You know, like I've been, I've been that person who like, well, I need this kind of armor, and people like help me. They actually help me, and I want to, you know, be that person to help, and at the same time, be independent as well. Again, circle of life. But if you say circle of life, <laughs> don't, say don't say that again. And I'm now I'm going to be afraid of the way I ask you questions, Sly. Uh, but I mean, like getting it now with. In two months, that melded gear is... I know people don't want to hear this, but that melded gear is going to be garbage. It's going to be all that all that melding you just did. Oh, maybe it'll help you level a little bit, but don't act like that's going to carry you all the way to level 60. I mean... It's a stepping stone, isn't it? It's a st But getting all the way to four star? Like, really? <laughs> is that really going to be the way to do it? Like, is that the way to do it right now, Mithri? Come on, Sly, Sly, does, Sly won't understand. Not really, no. I mean, like, because... Uh, I, people, like I said, obviously ask me this question every single day. They keep asking me, is it worth getting to four star? And my answer always has been, only if you'll make a profit before the expansion. Like, it going into the expansion, I mean, this is just based on how things are in other MMOs. We don't know for sure, but I, it would be very silly if level 50 gear carries you all the way to 60. Like, at the most, I reckon four star will carry us maybe to, say, 52. So, um, you know, and that's not exactly worth the what can be a big, big investment for just two levels that we're going to be doing anyway, even without gear. So, you know, I, I would say only do four star now if you're going to make a profit before the expansion. Do you think we'll have time to make a profit? I, I don't even know anymore, to be perfectly honest, because a lot of the four star crafted items are things like, you know, the artisan gear or the uh, gathering gear, which is, again, is part of the what gear that's going to about to, you know, is about to expire. So it, it might even be difficult to make a profit uh, at this point as well. So, you know, it's, it's, it's one of those things. So, for example, I am obviously leveling up my crafts on 
my alts at the moment, and I am not going to be taking them beyond the Talon vendor gear. You know, I don't see a point, and I'm definitely not going to be taking them to four star. So because I, I won't be able to make a profit in time, there won't be any any uh, any gain. All right, well that's fair enough. So along with that, I mean, the loosest tool is part of that. I mean, people have been asking in the chat, can you get all of them before the expansion? I mean, I'm sure that's a quick yes or no answer, but still the the point of getting it all like. I don't think the loosest is going to matter going into the expansion. Like some people are saying, it could be like the relic; it gets upgraded. I don't, I don't know. I'm not buying it. You don't think it's going to get upgraded, Matthew? I, I, I really don't think so. I think, it, I don't think they will do that. I think it will be exactly like the, uh, exactly what you're saying about the relic. That it will just, there will just be a new level 60 weapon that we'll get when we finish the level 60 crafting class quest. And then that will get upgraded the same way that these ones are brought upgraded to Supra and to Lucis. But I think it'll be a completely separate item, in my opinion. But what if at level 60 we get the ability to, th to stone throw again from 1.0? Can we get that back so we can bring crafters and the stuff and have them perma stun? <laughs> that used to be a 1.0 ability that they got. They could throw a rocket stuff to stun it while they ran away. <laughs> wow. Well, Make it happen. I mean, I, I, I never did crafting at 1.0. I, I you saved just. I saved myself that burden, yeah. <laughs> yeah, trust me. You saved yourself. The, you No, terrible, terrible experience. Okay, yeah. well, learning to manage your inventory now is obviously going to be a big deal then. But I guess when it comes to Happy. preparing for the expansion, not just managing your inventory, but as we've already discussed, the hoarding of items. These items may go up in value when there's less people in those old areas. So is it worth it to still not just manage your inventory, but almost let yourself hang on to maybe too many items that are below level 50 to maybe turn a profit in a different way when the expansion hits? I think you're still sitting on money, though. If, but if that, what if it's more money later? <laughs> we don't know that until until then. Like, but what if just, it's not worth much now? I mean, it might be I'm, worth more than. I mean, coming from you, you probably don't have to worry about this because you, like, you're our first world. You probably have like 20 million gil in the bank right now. Oh, hush. Um, anyway, shh. <laughs> so you, you don't have to worry about this. Like, people well, who are I'm not, It's not me who's worrying. I'm, I'm worried I, about everyone else who's doing these this item hoarding like I am. Because I'm, I'm doing it I'm for no reason. I'm getting rid of it. I have, I have a million some change in the bank right now. I, I'm getting rid of it as soon as I can. Putting it on the market or just giving it away to a merchant. I'm learning to, you know, kind of make money off of the stuff I craft and the stuff that's just trash. What about you, Mithy? Yeah, I mean, um, when it comes to the sort of if items become more valuable question, I mean, for me, um, I feel like they even if they did, like let's say for example, we start we go browse through the market board and we realize that oh, like steel ingots are suddenly worth twenty k each. Someone will see that, and then before you know it, everyone will go get them, and then the market board will be swamped within a day. So I don't the. I find after expansion launches and big patches that the market becomes extremely volatile. So, I mean, I think really what's more important is to just have the ability to get these items yourself should you need them for yourself and not worry too much about making profits on the market board from low-level items. I mean, you'll probably always make more money than gathering the new stuff in the new zones than you would, would ever make from gathering old items. I mean, that's my opinion, at least. Well, I mean... I see your point. I, I totally see your point. I've always been, like in World of Warcraft, I was very much a go farm level 40 dungeons, break the stuff down, and then sell it. Like, that was my way of making money. But it's not always guaranteed money, right? And new items have a little bit more in demand, a little bit easier to sell. So I get where you're coming from with that. So before we move into preparing for the expansion, we need to touch on the five main reasons again. Because it's a big question whether or not all that stuff really matters still going into the expansion. I mean... I think it's fair to say we don't need to discuss the being independent and repair your own gear because those will be good for the rest of time. Yes. But I want to put emphasis on the other three points. Well, we're gonna now. I have these. You guys can see that the five lined out, you know, behind the scenes. But three mm -hmm. and four: avoiding high prices on the market board and making your own profit with items that you've crafted. So we kind of just touched on that a little bit, selling the new items. But volatile. Let's define volatile. Because that was the word that Mithra used. What kind of market board prices? Give me one item that you saw on the market board that was sold day one for a price and what it's worth now, if you have any sort of idea. Sly, give me one item, you first, that you can think of. God, 
because I use the market every day now. I'm trying to think. Um, well, I know I've been ripped off. I, I, <laughs> I mean, like, I've been using the market to get, like, new stuff for new classes and working on BARD. I know I've been ripped off. I, I know that for a fact. But, um, yeah, I think it was something for BARD, or, I mean, Archer. and 110? Item level 110 stuff? Oh, no. God, no. I'm still freaking 30, 39. So, no. Um, in any... <sighs> And all the past I fifty stuff I earn, like I'm not gonna buy it from the market. Maybe lower level stuff I can get from the market for a fair price, but still, I end up getting ripped off. Um, you don't even need to name one item anymore. We get the point. People, people have played you, Sly. Yes. You know, <laughs> yes. Played. And even though I go, like, even though I go for sometimes for the lowest price, the lowest price item, like it's still kind of a rip off sometimes. Fair enough. And I try to be fair in the market, too. I'm just saying. Oh, S Sly, this is, this no, is, no, no, this is I, a dog-eat-dog -dog world. Don't try I to be under, nice. I, I, un, like, I undercut the lowest circle price of life, I can. man. It's the circle of See? life. See? You said it now. <laughs> I, you can't even blame it on me. See, I try to be like the lowest price. I, I try to be fair. I'm an entrepreneur. You're the guy who's trying to match the lowest price guy instead of undercutting him by one just because you know your item will pop. I'll up undercut later. him by 100 if I need to. <laughs> I want to get my shit sold. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, Sly. Mithri, you you might have a better memory of exact items than item yeah, prices. I already see my... my example in the chat, so that's the one I'm going with. Give me one yeah. item that you've seen that was available day one, and then what it's worth now. Just because, And it's still usable now, it's still valuable now to some degree, but how much the price fluctuated in that time, just because people wanted to get it day one. Yeah, I mean, for example, I can't remember which patch it was, but do you remember when like uh, the Treasure Hunts came out? 2.1, I think? Was it 2.1? Yeah, and I, I remember like the day before the patch came out, like the gathering and perception and all these different materials were worth, like I'd be, on Masamune server, they were worth like a thousand gil each or even less. They were really, really cheap. The next day after the patch launched, someone had cleared out the market and relisted them all for about 45k each. So, and they still all sold because people were that desperate to be like, I need to gather maps, I need to gather maps. So, and obviously now they're back to not worth much anymore. So, you know, that's how, when I say about the volatile market, that's what can happen. It's like when people are so desperate to get into some new feature and they don't, um, you know, pay attention to things. But I, I also remember one other example, basically, is I remember when I first started the game and um, I needed brass ingots myself. And I, I couldn't find them on, on uh, the vendor I needed them from. So I went straight to the market board. I bought like a stack of 20 for about 500 gil each. And then I found out maybe like half an hour later that I could have actually gone to another vendor and bought it for about 30 gil each. Yeah. So I, it was from then on that I promised myself that from now on I'm going to check websites, I'm going to check listings to make sure I know exactly if there's any item that can be vendor bought just so that this doesn't happen to me again. That's a good piece of advice to everyone. Always, always check the NPCs Research. before Research. You, Because if you, because everyone seems to think they're genius with that, like, oh, I'll just buy it from the NPC, put it on the market board, people who don't know, I can take advantage of them. It happens a lot. <laughs> Definitely <laughs> be careful with that. So uh, we touched on avoiding the high prices and the item I wanted to, the, the Allegan Catalyst, when those came out in like 2.5, it was, those were like, for the first day, 500k, they were 500 gil by the second day. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> people realized how common they were and that nobody was making the items. But the last of the five main reasons that I want to touch upon is reducing the cost of finishing quests that require quest turn-ins, like the Zodiac quest. Now, we're talking about, just to reiterate, we're talking about, you know, preparing for the expansion. You know, does any of those, do any of these points matter? One would argue the Zodiac quest necessarily isn't a big deal, but we do know there is one that is coming later. I guess the question is, is crafting going to be another big component of the Zodiac quest line? I mean, what do you guys think? I think personally that they probably will uh, copy a very similar model because um, they obviously know very well that there's going to be lots of people who are going to start the game fresh in Heaven's Ward. So they will kind of, they won't copy and paste it exactly, I don't think, but they will introduce similar elements um, just to keep that sort of, you know, so people can enjoy the fun 
of like um, atma farming and like farming Did you just use the word fun and atma in, <laughs> atma in the sentence. same sentence really yeah yeah <laughs> Fun, yeah. No, but I, I do think there will be an element of that just because that's just the model they go for over, like, many, um, many patches. I think there will be some of that. Still shaking my head about the fun and atma comment. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I agree with them. I think it's gonna, um, they're going to try to make it to where it's accessible for the newer players for 3.0. I mean, not that it'll, um, not too much that it'll deter the current uh, install base, but it'll make it accessible at least for everybody. All right. Well, then it seems like all the five points still definitely apply, like one hundred percent. So, what I'm understanding is, go level your crafters. And now we got to talk about actually preparing for the expansion. Those are all like points we were trying to make to convince ourselves, hey, it'll be okay. Like we should, we can do it now. It'll still be worth it then. But preparing for the expansion is kind of an interesting thing because it's not like we have access to any of the materials that are going to be available there. You know, right from the get-go, we're going to need new stuff. But there are new features. There are a lot of changes coming into the expansion, and we really need to talk about those things because they're going to change the way you approach leveling, the way you approach gearing. All of that stuff is going to change. So first and foremost, let's talk about preparing for the first, the biggest thing that they've been talking about, free company airships and free company housing additions i guess i should say the housing one's kind of weird to say a lot of free companies have an issue where one or two people are big crafters and then everyone else just kind of says hey i need those people <laughs> if those people aren't on i ain't doing nothing so with these big big features coming it's important to have a lot of crafters or you think that this is something that just having a few select people while everyone else kind of goes out and does the gathering of the materials themselves is it, which which way do you think this goes better? Um, well, personally, because, you know, I started my own FC, and I have actually said to the FC that when it comes to gathering the items, we should just gather them together and just fill up the RFC chest with as many materials as we can so that then we can help people level up their crafting. So working together for gathering, I think, is actually a really good idea. In terms of the does an FC need lots and lots of crafters, that depends on the crafter. Because if there, there might be another Mithri somewhere who would love to be the sole crafter in an FC and have everyone fuel them. But it really depends on the player because some other players might feel like over um, burdened with that. You know, they simply they want to go out, they want to explore the um, expansion zones and except they're being locked in the FC house to craft for the FC. So it's, uh, it really depends on, um, on the crafter themselves. But I would say like... Uh, on an average for an FC, I would say three to five crafters is a good number as an average, you know, um, obviously depending on the size of the FC, but that's a good sort of number to have, just so that, you know, people can work together. And as well, what, one thing I'm definitely finding in my FC is that uh, the more crafters you have working together, the quicker you can get things done. It's incredible. Like, if you have ten crafters working together to, like, say, boost someone up to with their Grand Company seals, for example, you can help one player with ten crafters get, like, a million um, Grand Company seals in the space of an hour. Whereas if you did it solo, it might take you two weeks. So it's, um, you know, there is definitely a power in numbers thing. Okay. Fair enough. So, Sly, uh, you're going to be one of those five crafters, right? Uh, yes, I am. Absolutely. I mean, <laughs> yeah, just absolutely. Getting level, just getting to level 15 right now, but you're well on your way. Yeah, definitely. Right. So, we've been talking about crafting this whole episode, and I think it's fair a lot of people ask this before the show, they ask during the show. Um, gathering. I mean, we've been talking about getting materials, but we haven't actually spoken about gathering at all. Now, it feels like gathering is kind of just the fuel for crafting, so it was almost implied that it was important. But with gathering itself, especially when preparing for a new expansion, um, material cost at the start of a new patch is a pretty big deal when it comes to gathering. And we touched on that a little bit before, but um, do gatherers... Okay, so gatherers working together with crafters versus a gatherer abusing the market board, realizing that everything's in high demand and that everyone's still trying to figure everything out. Which way do they go? Do they get the crafters, help them out, or do they go the selfish route and just sell that stuff on the market board for blown up prices? Can't you do both? But you only probably do one because what are the odds of you collecting all these extra materials and then just being like, 
Well, I'll just sell these. Why I won't give them to the crafter to make I more think, valuable items? I think it depends. It goes back to like the amount of crafters you have in your FC. Like, if you don't have that many um, crafters in your FC, you really don't need a, to give a lot to your crafter. I mean, if anything, half of what you do, and then put the other half in the market. I mean, it's gonna go like if you're a good person, if you're a good gatherer, it's gonna go back to the FC either way or to help someone. If not, I mean, it'll help the individual. But I think. There, there is a middle ground in that. I think there is a middle ground. You just have to find a delicate middle ground in there. Well, Mithri, if we said how many crafters you have in a free company, how many gatherers do you think you should have in a free company? Uh, More or less, same? Yeah, I think basically everyone who crafts should do this. So just have some sort of uh, gathering under their belt as well because, again, it's also part of the independent mm -hmm. stuff. So it's sort of like you can't really be independent if you're buying everything from the market board. You know, you still need to have a way of reducing your costs as far as you possibly can. So, uh, like for example, in my um, FC, I've pretty much said to all of them, like I want everyone to be gathering once the expansion launches. And if we have excess stock, like if there's some items we get too much of, then yeah, we, if we'll just sell them and put the money into the FC chest so that we can help each other level crafting. But uh, I've basically I don't want to ban people in my FC from buying things, but I'm trying to suggest to them that for literally the first month of the expansion, not to buy a single item from the market board and only to sell. You know, and that, but that's again just my just from previous experience in in MMOs basically. But I do feel that yeah, I think basically gatherers should think uh, sorry crafters should think about gathering themselves. So for example, in my new uh, crafting series. Um, I'm probably going to be asking people to start thinking about leveling up their own gatherers by the time we get to roughly level 20. So uh, just because there's certain materials which then start becoming unavailable. Because I found in crafting and uh, gathering that between like 1 to 20, everything is vendable, everything is super easy. But then between levels 20 to 40-ish, that's a sort of middle ground where the materials start to become a bit less available, a bit more weird to get and then at high level things suddenly become available again because they're all available on the beastman tribe uh, vendors so it's that middle ground that the gathering helps you sort of break through in terms of reducing your costs and i it'll probably be the the same thing again in the expansion i don't see why it will change fair enough i can see that well some things will change but uh we need to go over those one by one by one because uh we spoke about this last week a lot of the changes that are coming to gathering to crafting uh information that came straight out of the last live letter and uh disciples of hand and land it, it's not going to be as straightforward as it is now and there's a lot of things that have to be learned so preparing we went over that you got to start preparing by having multiple crafters and gatherers available to you if you're looking into free company features gathering especially <laughs> Make sure you have people that are willing to get materials, save everyone the money, and save everyone the effort. Now, as for the changes in the expansion, the big one we need to talk about. We're going to start with crafters, but we have everything for crafters and gatherers here. The specialization tier. Because this has two very possible effects. The first potential effect is that it eliminates the ability to be 100% efficient on every crafter on a single character. So you can no longer be that one guy that everyone relies on on a free company. It is an actual impossibility based on the way they've described it so far. So at that point, we have to ask, is it a good idea to make multiple characters? Or do you get more crafters? Sly, come on, you're the one who just started leveling on the first one. So I know that you're already planning out that second character. I don't think so. <laughs> I don't. I don't. I mean, it's hard enough as is on one character. It, I don't think I could do it. <laughs> like, I, I need somebody else. I need somebody else. Like, don't, please. Mm. Mithri, what do you think? Um, I basically, I would say, when it comes to multiple characters, I would say that it's for the people like myself who have been... Because, for example, I hit level 50 on all crafters more than a year ago. So I've, I have a lot of spare time to do it. But someone who's brand new, they should just do it the one time, especially because, you know, there's no time left. And as well, you know, it, it is designed, this all specialization and so on is designed, the same with DSynth, so that you do team up with other players. It's encouraging teamwork. So, you know, that's why they don't want, 
you know, there to be omnicrafters walking around all the time because, you know, we need people to work together. That's the essence of an MMO. That's the reason we play to, like as a team, why we have FCs and link shells and so on. So, um, like I say, is it a good idea to make multiple characters? If you're the crazy crafter like myself, sure, but for, let's say, Mr. Normal Player, no, really no. And going back to this point, um, in terms of the specialist tier, because you can only um, choose, what, three, was it? Yeah, Happy? yeah. Oh. I'm pretty sure they said it was a maximum of three of the crafting classes you can choose to be a specialist in. Is so. there is there a specific, um, in, terms of, in terms of maximizing your profit, are there specific crafters that like maximize the most amount of profit, or does it depend on server? What do you what are you saying? Which um, three would you pick? Yeah, well, that's what I'm. What I would do, I would pick one to make accessories. Obviously, mm -hmm. the main one being goldsmith. Okay. One to make armor. So you'd have you'd have to pick the ar the armor one. You'd have to pick ar what's good for your class. Is it armor? Is it leather worker? Is it weaver? Whichever would make your armor. And then the third one, you could do um, alchemist or culinarian because they can provide you either food or potions for your raiding and stuff like that. So I, I would pick one in those. If they're like, say, different categories of crafting, they would be the three categories, like accessories um, or, or accessories or tools. So you could, for example, you could lump together goldsmith and blacksmith and choose between one of those one of the armor classes, and then either alchemist or culinarian. That, that's the way I would do it, at least. See, like that's I what I've been trying to tell people. It's like, people are like, which crafter makes so much money? And I always say, just make, just make a culinarian or an alchemist. That's all, that's, it's like that final recommendation. Everyone's going to have specialists in one of those two. Mm -hmm. I guarantee it. The other ones, I think a lot of people, I think a lot of people will agree with you to break it down like that. But um, it's hard to pick only three. And that's why if you are yeah. someone like Mithra, you can have three characters and just have all your bases covered and not worry about anything. But it might be a little bit easier to do that multiple character thing, depending on the way this, this next point ends up playing out. Because the other change that could potentially come from specializations is potentially eliminating the need to level every crafter to be efficient at one crafter. Because one of the features of the specialization tier is that it will give you new abilities. And they're supposed to be abilities that, according to the way Yoshi P kind of commented on it, he said, uh, you know, it became a necessity to level every crafter to be efficient on one, and they want to move away from that whole omni-crafter sense. So what the hell am I doing now? You're getting ready, because maybe you'll still need to cross-class skills for 50. Just shut up, Sly, and keep playing. <laughs> <laughs> just don't question it. Just, just, just keep going. I'm doing it, too. I got no reason. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? So, do you think we're actually going to need all these crafters at 60 more specifically? Do you think we'll even still need them all at 50? Or are these abilities going to be that good that we're going to be able to just say, Hey, I just want to level this 1 to 60, and I'm good to go. You better need them. <laughs> I mean, I, I think you personally, you'll probably... I mean, my guess is that you'll probably need at least a couple... But to be honest, um, I personally will get all eight of them leveled anyway. Because when he was saying about not needing all of them, he just means, for example, like right now, for example, when you want to do four star, you have to literally share like 10 abilities from all eight crafts if you want to have a chance of getting 100% with four star. And um, whereas what they're saying is, it's like, for example, they might add in, like, let's say to uh, Carpenter, like Super by God's Blessing, if you're a specialist in. Carpenter, where you will get like 400% quality in one move. So therefore, you won't need all of these tinkering with other end abilities. But the way I'm looking at it as well, though, is that what are the end of the level 50 abilities now, like Comfort Zone, By God's Blessing, Ingenuity 2, and so on? They, they will be the equivalents of the level 60 specialist abilities. So, um, but they will be super powered. That's that's obviously that's what he's implying basically. So maybe at level sixty we won't even get great abilities on the crafters anyway. So that maybe you know you'll have to get those two or three um, you know specialist abilities to work together in order to have a chance of getting to high quality. So it's like it might be another way of saying that uh, you do need to get everything maxed out, but you only have to do it twice or three times, and that's it. You don't have to do it eight times. Good. Do you feel better now, Sly? A little bit. 
Are you sure? I, I need to see it doesn't it. sound like you feel better. I need to see it for myself. <laughs> <laughs> Saying like I just don't want like just don't want to feel like all the work I'm doing is just for you know you're doing it because it's fun. I you am. said you caught the I, bug. That does it shouldn't I, be a bother to you if you caught it, the bug. I mean, it's not a bother, but at the same time, it's like half of me wants to, you know, feel a little good That's about it. Like. Bloodborne, right? <laughs> have it. <laughs> had to do it. No. Yep, I had to do it. So, um, along with the specialization tier, the bigger thing for me, at least, like I mentioned before, the melding process being a big reason I never really got into being a two, three, four star crafter. Um, they're adding different ways of gearing. The melding process is still there. You can just, you know, get the highest quality gear, stick some gathering, some, you know, or some crafting materia into these pieces. But they're adding a new currency called scripts. Yes, scripts. No T. A script is a real thing. Google it. We Googled it last episode. You should have been there when we Googled it. Thanks, Miz. Thank you, Miz. <laughs> so... Crafters and gatherers wanted to more, be more like battle classes. You got yourself your own tombstone. It's a tombstone system for gatherers and crafters, and it's a cheaper means of getting gear. You know, sure, you can't rush it down like you could with the melding process, but it's an alternative to melding for people who want to maybe spend a little bit less money and not necessarily rush that max efficiency crafter. Um, and on top of that, you can use it to find resources for, to make even rare items. So... Quick yes or no from both of you before I get your explanations. Do you like scripts? Do you not like scripts? Sly? I like it because it, it's kind of going back to what we were talking about with um, Ironworks versus Zodiac. It gives you an option. You have an option now um, to either meld or go the way of scripts, which is probably the way I'll probably go. Yeah, scripts. And Mithri? Yeah, the same for me. It's the fact there will be options. So I'll probably go for like the, let's say, over-the-top melding method on Mifri, and then I'll use the uh, scripts for my alts. So it's, it'll be nice having both of them without having to do the melding three times, because that, that would be just hell. Which do you think will take more time? Uh, I reckon the Tombstone will take more, let's say, time, but the melding will take more effort if that makes sense. Because obviously when it comes to Tombstone features, there's always like the weekly caps and stuff like that. So you, you have to space it out over a certain period of time. Whereas melding, if you're rich, if you're one of those players that's got like uh, 600 million in the bank, cough, ash, cough, then, uh, <laughs> you know. Shout out. Uh, yeah, yeah. Then, uh, you know, he will, you'll be able to, some, you know, players like that will be able to just burn through it like straight away. But um, it said, yeah. So it's, in terms of, like I said, so melding will be more effort. Tombstones will be, take longer time, is my opinion. But with it, when it comes to the effort, like if you literally work on it 24 hours a day, like every penny you make, you reinvest to push yourself higher and higher, the way crafting was in the past. Then you can still do it in theory quickly if you if you do it that way. So you're saying scripts won't be as guilt intensive as melding. No, 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 no. I, I don't think so. I don't think we'll we'll be at all. I mean, I mean, I'm not being stingy or anything. Yes, you are. I mean, <laughs> yes, you are. It's there to save me money, so it better not be as gill intensive. I'm just saying the way I don't I don't go into my tombstone gear and be like, man, I wish I could spend gill on this. No. <laughs> so <laughs> okay, do. all right, all right. Which one are you gonna do then? Are you kidding me? I'm doing scripts. I ain't touching. <laughs> I am not touching a single piece of tier four or potentially five materia. I mean, at that point, I might as well, at this, you, at this point, you might as well, you could save up materia at this point because the grade five is not even guaranteed to be in the game when it first launches for uh, heaven's word. So scripts, I'm going that route. If you okay. don't want to spend a lot of money and you want to spend more time gearing, go that way. And I mean, one thing to remember is there are two different types of scripts. There is one that's uncapped, similar to, I guess, the way soldiery is now. And then there is a higher tier that, I'm assuming it'll be out right away, uh, despite the fact their way they're releasing esoterics. That'll um, be even higher, but that'll sit on a weekly cap. So I guess you could theoretically spam scripts, get a full set of basic gear, and then work on the weekly stuff while doing the melding. I guess could be another way of going about it. it depends on what you need to even craft all this stuff in the first place. That's, see, that's a lot see, of so, so we, now we have stuff to do, actually, in, in terms of waiting two weeks for Alexander. We have stuff to do. 
You were complaining that we didn't have anything See, to do. See, don't act, don't talk to me like you're going to level a crafter in those two weeks. Okay, you're leveling battle jobs the whole time. Don't lie to me. It's, be it's not going to take the entire two weeks. It's not. I'm, I'm going to do some crafting. With 90Ks it will. I'm going to do some crafting. I'm going to do some crafting. Um, the way I'm doing it now, like, I think I kind of created a schedule for myself to where I can get, you know, all my battle stuff out the way, like, probably in four days, like, cat poetics, and then the rest I can craft, you know? It's set the schedule. Sly, so, like, this conversation is going to come back a million times. I already <laughs> yes, know. it is. It is. Know. Circle of life. Anyway. Um, see? I can't even see, say See, now it. you it's hate it. it. That's why I started doing it. <laughs> All right, so the next system that they're implementing in the expansion, and this is going to change. We kind of discussed the way leveling works right now. Yes, we have the XL leaves. That is one way to do it for six quick crafting quests a day, you know, whatever. And then you have leaves, which you burn through, whether you have other people crafting you items or you're crafting them yourself and you're handing them in. Those are pretty much the premier ways. I don't think, I think we can all agree that literally doing nothing but crafting, as much as it can work, don't. <laughs> like, don't just spam craft and do nothing else and don't do leaves. I think we can agree that's not a real good way of leveling right now or not a fun way of leveling or an efficient way. Right. Yeah. Everyone's nodding their head. Mm -hmm. But they're adding a new system to get you those last few levels that everyone hates when they're just out of leave quests. And that is the collectible system. This is both for Disciples of Land and Hand. And it's kind of strange. I don't really... They explain how it's going to work with crafting a little bit more efficiently, but there's going to be like a higher quality type thing in there. It's not just going to be, oh, you have to HQ them or NQ them. There's going to be like a whole new system in place in terms of like the type of quality it's going to need. And these items, you can start making them at level 55. They give you scripts. They give you experience points. And it's just, it seems like a great system to add for that last little stretch of leveling from 55 to 60. What do you guys think? Well, I think it adds a certain new dynamic because they don't, you know, because we've obviously had this current crafting system in the game now for, well, I guess a year and a half or more since the game came out. And they have to change it up. They have to make it more interesting. They have to give uh, cra crafters a new challenge more than just, you know, let's just do another 10 levels and get a bunch of new recipes. You know, it has to be more interesting than that. So I think it is a good idea, definitely. Sly? Yeah, I think it's a good idea. I mean, I do levs, but not a lot. You know, I kind of just for now stick to the um, to the log for the first time bonus. But yeah, I... well, one to fifteen, I think that's the better option. I, Mithri, I think you could, is fifteen's the level you really want to start burning through leaves, isn't it? Because don't the f first fifteen go pretty fast without him? Yeah, they do. I, from experience, for what I've seen, yeah, it does kind of go fast. But Mithri. Yeah, I mean, for me personally, um, like in my new uh, crafting series, I'm not going to actually suggest leaves until about level 25. And the reason uh -huh. why, the, the, well, the reason why is because um, it is a guide for doing it solo. So at level 15, you can't guarantee high quality. But by level 25, if you have the right gear, you should be able to guarantee high quality, which means you can then guarantee high quality for all your own turn-ins. Um, for the leaves yourself rather than having to rely on other players. So you can start at 15 if you wish, you know, if you have someone to help you out and so on, but you might be burning the potential of a lot of leaves with normal quality hand ins. So, you know, it's because I, I try to rate things on a sort of time versus gain scale. And I, that's why I would feel like, for example, um, you could say burn through all of your leaves to get all of your eight crafts from, say, 25 to 30. And then by the time you get all of them to 45, you, your leaves should have recharged, and then you can burn yourself from 45 to 50 solo. So that's the sort of strategy I'm uh, sort of going for. All right. That's, uh, yeah, I, I guess I, I've, heard, I've heard both approaches before. Um, but having this last little thing in the final stretch should definitely help out, especially with the scripts, because you can start getting scripts before you even hit level 60 and start working on increasing your gear at that point. So... Talking about scripts, scripts are used for one other system that we've heard about, and this is a gathering system, and it's called the favor system. I wasn't a huge fan of this when we spoke about it last week. You use scripts to obtain a buff called the divine favor. While you have that buff on, you're able to locate certain nodes and gather rare materials. Favors last unlimited time. To me, it just seems like an over-glorified, unspoiled node system. 
Where it's, as opposed to having an ability that locks away your unspoiled nodes, you have a buff that unlocks your unspoiled nodes. I mean, Sly, we got your thoughts on this last week. You thought I was mm -hmm. overly pessimistic about it. I still think you are. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's just it seems like it, it seems like extra work to do the same thing. Mithri, do you think there, am I missing something? Am I missing something at all? Like I, I, I don't get it, man. Yeah, I mean, for me, I wouldn't really focus on the the limited time and the, the how you get it. It is those gather the rare items thing that I'm most curious about because they have actually said that some of the crafted gear in the game will be best in slot that it won't necessarily just be dungeon and raid gear, which would be best in slot for Battlecraft uh, for uh, classes. So um, those gather rare items with a limited time period are probably going to be mats that are needed to make those sort of pieces of gear. So that's what I'm more curious about. So, it's sort of, so I'm more interested in, like I said, the result than the means, if that makes sense. And in terms of the, the limited time thing, I wonder, like, how limited? Like, is it going to be a case of, like, you accept it in a town, but you can only, you only have, like, a minute to fly up to that floating island, you know, really high in the sky to just about get it? Or will it just be a case of just take your sweet time? Like, will it be a challenge to get there in time to get the rarest mats? You know, that's what I'm interested in. That, that comment with the best of slot crafted gear is always so weird because OGP at the same time he said that he also said we don't want crafted gear to be best in slot. <laughs> like he's I don't know I I think I'm I'm curious to see where that ends up going because one thing that has me concerned with um, this favor system and the way because uh, some people are suggesting other things in the chat they're suggesting things like it's a means of limiting the qua the the quantity of rare items. Problem is if everybody says, oh, this is the best item, Go, everyone go gather that, everyone gets the same divine favor, everyone goes and gathers that item, oh, which item's the most expensive? We're all gonna go gather that item. And now because we're not waiting an hour for, this, for these things to respawn, they may be even more common. I have so many concerns about this system that it is, again, one of those things, we just don't know, the we just don't know streams. I'm just... But what would your ideal system be then? Like? I don't know. Like, I don't think there is a right way to do it ultimately. I think no matter what, as long as so, no matter what, on you're the gonna internet, be unhappy. I'm yeah. always going to be Mr. Unhappy when it comes to these things because the market is so easy to crash. The only thing I'm hoping is that this doesn't mean that like RMT are going to make like 40 bots all get the same divine favor <laughs> and all go destroy the market at the same time. Thank you for ruining the shard and crystal market. Um, yeah, it's just I've got a lot of thoughts on it. Endgame gathers. I don't know. I feel for you because I hope that this system ends up being better for you guys and it's not just gathering. Clusters. Another thing, I, I keep thinking about this. Are we going to have another shard crystal cluster? Is it going to go another tier up after this point? Do you think they're not going to bother adding that as user interface to the inventory? Hmm. And will you need I, this favor system to do it more specifically? Yeah, I was thinking about that. I reckon there will be one more. Um, something like some maybe some dragon crystal or something. Something extravagant for the expansion. Um, and something that will require higher level gathering because it, it will then just give a purpose to the gathering because right now you can be a gatherer with barely any gear and you can gather every item in the game whereas you can get your gathering stats super super high like a hundred higher than it needs to ever go so I felt like gathering right now was sort of really underutilized so I feel like they're trying to just make it a, a, better, a better system you know, a better, a more challenging to give gatherers the people. So, so there might be people who love gathering who hate crafting, and they just like, why not? You know, it's like, why not have full time gatherers? You know, that's the thing. So, um, I mean, that's just my opinion. I reckon there will be one more because otherwise, it's that it, they need to add more reasons as well for people to explore the new zones. So, exploring the new zones, you know, ima like imagine if we have to go to like the top of some, like I said, some floating island just to get the occasional like lightning um, dragon clusters or something. I, I think that would actually be really fun. Yeah, when you you, I agree. you you didn't see me, but when you said people who like gathering but don't like crafting, I gave a nice big thumbs up and a smile. Just, just yeah. letting you know, <laughs> you guys can't see me. See, always... I like both. I like both, but I can't like I can't put in the time to do both. Hey, you're putting in so, the time now, Sly. I'm putting in the time to craft, but I need to get back to my miner or like go to Fisher, or do something. And it sucks because you can't level those the same. You got those evaluation leaves, and that's it. Mm -hmm, yep. <laughs> evaluation leaves and handins. Crank on the handins. Thank you, thank you, thank you. 
So there is one more system that they didn't really touch upon too much, probably because the description they gave of it was pretty Big. cut and dry. And it is the regional folklore system, as stupid as that sounds. And it basically is, it incorporates the lore of those zones into gathering. The, they, they summarized it in one sentence. It was similar to the master book system. Um, we kind of have that in place now, I guess. It's like we have to gather high, high quality like items to get items from an NPC. I mean, I don't understand how the system's any better. I mentioned, they mentioned talismans before, and like, I don't know, because the favor system, the regional folklore system, feels like they've mixed them up at times with the way they've spoken. I don't, isn't this just the same as the NPC we have in Mordona right now? For gatherers? We have that, we have one of those, Talon, right? Yeah, Talon. I mean, um, it, it probably just makes it more interesting than just having to constantly go back to Talon for everything. You know, it makes it like, you know, you get to add some more lore, add some more random stories, you know, like they could say, for example, like, oh, you want to gather those dragon femurs or the bones of the dragons or whatever from this mining node, but did you know that these dragons are blah, 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 you know, as in like, just to make it more interesting than simply, oh, Talon wants like, you know, free high quality calibrated cogs, which are impossible and going to just infuriate everyone to get. You know, it's like it, it makes it more interesting than that. It makes it more of a challenge. So I, I, I welcome any more excuse to add more lore and story and, and whatever into the game. I, I welcome it definitely. Yeah, I agree. I think it adds more of a like talking point to it. Like another reason for us to kind of you know geek out and like not doesn't really. I don't think it will add that much to the story. Add much to like the current story or the current storyline. Uh, in 3.0, but it will add, it will create a talking point. So I think it's it's a it's a little bit of an addition, but not too much. Yeah, I mean, people are going back to what Yoshi P said. I think two live letters ago, where you need to like learn about the lore of an item to find it in the zone, almost like just having an additional step to find an item. It was it was what confused me was that they talked about it being similar to the master book system, which I don't. <laughs> This isn't isn't a big deal to me. It's just there's there's a lot of ways that this thing could go, and uh, with all these new systems in place, it seems like everything we know now is still going to apply, which is great. But it is just going to be a flat addition on top of the systems we already have in place. It's an actual expansion of systems, which expansions don't usually do. Some expansions just rework a system, throw a couple of things on top of it. This is, feels like an actual expansion. I don't know if you guys feel the same way. And I, I do, but what I wanted to get from both of you is do you think this addition is doing too much for crafting and gathering, or do you think it's it's a welcome addition? What do you think? I mean, I think I think to me it's a welcome addition. It gives it, it gives a lot more, I want to say, like Mithri said, reasons to, I wanted to say excuse, but reasons to uh, gather and craft. And, like, this is why I'm doing this now, like, I'm kind of excited for the, these additions and see what the payoff will be for these additions. But what do you think? Is it a good addition is, or is it just blah? Mithra, you got this one first. Yeah. I mean, for me, I feel like it just makes it more of a challenge because I don't think it was ever their intention to, like, for Mr. Mis like Mithri Menafield to come along and macro every single craft and every single level of every single craft. They, they want to make it more than that. They want it to be more engaging than that. And people have had a year and a half to get used to crafting in the current system, so they need to add a new dimension to it. So it's like, it's like I was saying before. They need to show that there is a reason we've invested this time and learned how to craft and so on because we need that knowledge to then push it even further in these new newer directions in the future and what I like about this game really is that it's very much a everyone can be included sort of game like everyone does have the chance to do everything and they make things more accessible in the future should you not be one of the first through the door doing it so like in uh, raiding for example they add the echo buff after a certain amount of time in crafting they added in the easier gear to get from Talon and so on so they, they do make everything more accessible for for people but um, at the beginning they are gonna just make it a challenge uh, more of a challenge um, just for like I said for people like me 
to just say, can I smash my way through this before they nerf it, essentially. You know, just the same as, you know, uh, Raiders will be trying to smash their way through hard mode Alexander before they make it accessible to everyone. So that's the thing. So it's just to add that challenge for, for your favor. But as well, what I also love about this game is the fact that every single class in the game, whether battle class or crafters or gatherers, has a story. Like, and what they're trying to do, I feel, with the um, lore of the zones and stuff like that, is they're trying to, again, encourage people to actually read the quest text, read or listen to the NPCs, and not just be you know, like, okay, I need to do a crafting quest, click, 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 let's go get the mats. They, want, they said they want you to pay attention to it, because there is really amazing lore in this game, and it's a shame to click through it and skip it. So they're trying to make the game be played in, um, you know, the way I felt it should always have, have been played. Like I said, reading everything and just trying to absorb as much of the world as you can and not just, like, skip it as quickly as you can. Well, I definitely feel your approach for the, you know, hardest for the first people who want to just bash their heads against it kind of thing because i'm the per like you're the person who'll do that with crafting i'm the person who'll do that with raiding so i can understand it being the same idea uh executed on a different spectrum um as for it being a real sort of addition expansion i mean you've heard me i've i've kind of always just felt like a lot of this is the systems we already have just being replaced and relocated even if they are a bunch of systems already placed on top of the systems we have now which to me is what an actual expansion is it's not just rebalancing and retooling it's expanding upon things it's in the name for goodness sake yeah. i think they need to be a little bit more clear with the way that some of these things work for me to be fully invested and fully think that these are actually all good things i think the idea behind scripts is good because, again, making things a little bit more accessible, but you're gated behind time. Specialization tier, I think, could be good if those two potentialies that we named before end up actually coming to fruition. Collectibles, I think, are just great all around. Uh, it sounds like it's a new system overall. It's rewarding for leveling and at max level. Things like that, I'm always appreciative of. The favor system, I'm 50-50. In the regional folklore, I'm 50-50. Getting me to read the text in the game would be great if I wasn't just like, I need to get this item before it's worth only 100 gil on the market board. Like, <laughs> that, that, uh, I'm not going to stop and read the text. I'm going to go gather 200 of that item, and then I'll go back and be like, what did that guy say again? What is this? This, <laughs> this, is, a, this is a piece of a dragon bone. Okay. It's a piece of Nidhogg's, Nidhogg's like left eye. Got it. All right. Fantastic. <laughs> Good to know what properties that has. I think that it can all be great. I think they can make all these systems great. They've made crafting something that's been special in the game this entire time. I think they can continue doing that. Whether or not anyone in the chat thinks it's boring or whatever, gathering's boring. Guess what? It's better than, hmm, list of items, button, done, which isn't engaging at all. It's even more monotonous if you ask me. So That's what I do. <laughs> wait, what, what was that slide? But that's what I do right now. Go, don't downplay that. I'm no, like, I'm talking about like you literally just craft all 89 items. Do, 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 level 75. I mean, do, 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 okay, okay, so okay. Because they so actually I, punish you for doing that now because you don't get craft yeah. experience points if you do that system right now. Right. And it's also slow as knobs. But anyway, um, all right. So we've covered pretty much everything that we need to cover, at least that we have listed here with crafting. Mm -hmm. Let's give some last impressions of the changes coming forth with crafting. And if there's any sort of last advice that you have for your friends who may be wanting to get into crafting or gathering, uh, I'll go last. Let's start with Mithri. He is the guest. He can go first. Sure. Uh, I mean, for me, basically, is at the end of the day, what people need to remember about everything in the game, whether it's crafting, gathering, anything, is that it has to be, it doesn't have to, well, have to be is the wrong word. It, it should be fun. You should enjoy it, you know. It's sort of like you shouldn't do crafting, for example, just because Mifri enjoys crafting or just because someone else enjoys crafting. You should do crafting or try crafting to get fun out of it because at the end of the day, this is a game we're here to enjoy ourselves. And I think a lot of people tend to forget that, that we are here to have fun. And as well, the, I feel as well that sometimes 
um, people forget to make friends, as, as silly as that might sound. You know, it's an MMO. MMOs are, by definition, massively multiplayer games. They are designed to be played with other players. So, yes, they will gate certain content so that you can't be the Omnicrafter on one character, so that you engage with other players, so that you, you know, talk to each other, help each other out, and so on. You know, so, and what I feel as well about this game is that Square Enix have shown, especially for Yoshi P, that they are incredibly good at listening to the community. So, for example, when these, they have these new systems they're going to be trying, you know, as, uh, uh, scripts and so on, if they turn out to be incredibly unpopular, then they just won't do them again. You know, they will simply say they, they, they will listen to the community and they won't put it in again. They won't sort of force us to, to like it sort of thing. They're not that type of games company. And thank God for that. So, you know, uh, that's basically what I try to say to people as well, that, you know, if you're... If you enjoy crafting as much as me, great. If you want to learn more, you know, just ask me. I'm happy to help you out. But just remember to have fun, guys. You know, remember to enjoy yourself. Life is so short, you know, that you shouldn't be spending so much time doing things you don't enjoy. You know, I mean, that would be my, my general advice towards everything in the game, really. Fly, you're up, my friend. I was good, Mithri. That was good. I like that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> And Mithri and I talked about this um, before the show, um, doing crafting, like, in terms of profit. And really, it's a, it's a way to look at it, but at the same time, really, you should be doing it, as he said, for the enjoyability of it. Like, do it, like, because you think it's fun. And I do think it's fun. It, it, it might be tedious at times. And, yeah, I have to do a little bit, bit of research, um, a la Mithri's YouTube. But it, it's still fun to me. And, it, like... Why can't I not have fun while I make a profit or, you know, help my FC? Um, in terms of looking forward to, um, towards 3.0, um, all these features do have me excited. It just makes me, this is why I wanted to try crafting because of, like, new shiny stuff. Like, I, I hate to say it, I have, I have the attention span of a squirrel. I see something new and shiny. I want to try it. Like, and it's been I fun. squirrel works. Yeah, I thought, was, I thought that was like I thought dogs work like that. No, they like shiny stuff. Continue. <laughs> but yeah, um, end all be all, you should do it. Um, if you don't like crafting, don't, don't do it. Don't put yourself through it. I mean, if it's something you like, go for it. Go for it. I'm. It's something I like. I want to keep doing it. I want to take it to three I want to help my FC. I want to be more independent. Mm -hmm. You know, make my own gill. So yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with it. <laughs> Ever <laughs> You're now Sly the Squirrel. Sly the Squirrel. I can't be the fox no more, damn. You ain't a fox no more. See the some people are saying foxes work like that too. They like shiny stuff. Yeah. You had a perfect animal all set up for you, Sly. <laughs> now we have to call you Sly, aka Grey Squirrel. 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 That's why I said dog was this all. <laughs> yeah, that's the only reason I said it. <laughs> so I was thinking. Um, all right, Hap, you're up. Okay, my final thoughts are, if you want to do something, just do it. Like, the, the whole fun message is, I think, pretty unanimous across the three of us. My biggest thing is, a lot of people don't want to invest in crafting because they hear it's long, because they hear it's tedious, because they hear the way it is at the four-star crafting level, getting to that point. They let that be their excuse to not do it early on. But then, they'll be like, oh, my, my gear's always broken. I need to repair it. I'm always broke. I'm always... It's like, if those things bother you, whether or not you think the crafting and gathering is going to be fun, if it's a problem that you need to solve and those are the answers, you probably will have fun actually not needing to repair all the time. Having that 199% repair bonus. Because remember that you get a bonus if you repair yourself. It's not, it just doesn't just go to 100%. It's going to feel good selling some items that you crafted on the board. It's going to be good just Sorry, does. being independent. Yeah, he's only level 15 and it feels good on everything except for, like, armor. It, yeah. It's just, it's, it's good. It'll probably take a little bit of effort to do. But, I mean, I'm leveling crafting right now. Even if I haven't crafted a single item since I started leveling crafting, I'm just throwing money into the market boards. Like, all right, what's high quality? What do I need for the next five levels? Done. Oh, they're 16K each? Whatever. Don't do that. <laughs> don't, don't do that. But 
I'm leveling crafting, Sly's leveling crafting, Mithri's leveling crafting more for some unbelievable reason other than his <laughs> YouTube channel, because I know he's going to use it to be specialist in even more stuff. Mm -hmm. Give it a shot. Yeah. Give it a real shot. Don't just be like, oh, it sucks. I did it just to say I did it. Yeah, just please, just give it a shot. Just give it a shot. And that's, I think, all we really need to cover in this episode. Real quick, before we sign off with everyone, and again, thank you everyone for coming out to the show. It's uh, just like every week. It's always great seeing everyone talk in the chat, talk about the topic. Everyone seemed to be really interested in this. Um, do want to make a real quick announcement for next week's show, though? Next week, we will have three guests on the show. We really like having guests a lot, don't we, Sly? Yeah. Yeah, we do. We like having guests a lot. It makes things more interesting. But see, like Mithri, he made things like if it was just me and Sly talking about crafting, this was this is going to be the worst <laughs> show ever. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> especially what I what I've been doing. Yeah, it would have been terrible. <laughs> we Probably. might as well just pulled us up, just crafting items on the screen for an hour at that point. That's what I wanted to do for the show. <laughs> hey, next week we're gonna have three guests, and that they are the members of the Mog Talk podcast that'll be frosty tv frosty underscore tv gilly and adagio sorry if those are mispronunciations uh but haven't had time to really discuss the exact pronunciations with them just yet so i just took the information that was given to me uh, we're going to be talking about advice for newer players so we're really trying to take some of these shows and get people ready for the expansion get new players ready even get people who have played a lot and aren't new but are just looking into these systems and ways that they can improve their play styles and it's been great. This episode, we got to cover crafting, and to help us with that, I would like to, one last time, thank our guests. I keep pointing the wrong way because of the way cameras work. It's this way. It's never this way. Get it right. I'll get it right one day. No, I'm never okay. going to get it right because on my screen, he's to the right, so it's just it's instinctual. <laughs> I'd like to thank our guest, Mithri Menethil, for coming, the crafting man himself. Mithri, can you want to tell everyone where they can find you, social media, YouTube, all that fun stuff? Yep. Um, you can find me on youtube.com slash Mithri, um, M-I-T-H-R-I-E, if you need the spelling. And you can find me, you can follow me on Twitter, uh, at Mithri Menafil. I had to put my full name because at Mithri was taken, unfortunately. And as well, um, you, you don't want to know. You type it in, you'll see something very strange. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> yeah. And um, as well, um, you can send me um, an email. You can see my email address in the, um, the About section on my YouTube channel as well if you want. Or you can just come along to my live stream. I do live stream most days at twitch.tv slash Mifri. So, and I usually live stream at 8 p.m. UK, which is 3 p.m. Eastern, noon Pacific time. So if you want, just come hang out. If you have any questions about crafting, gathering, about anything really, just feel free to come along. If there's any questions that I just don't know the answer to, then there's always someone in the chat um, who can always answer. And uh, I just want to use this opportunity to basically say that isn't the Final Fantasy XIV community the best MMO community there is? I have not come across a better Final Fantasy, any MMO community, any gaming community better than this one. So thank you for all the love and all the support and all the everything. Really, guys, it really means a lot to me. It keeps me going. And just show love to each other all the time, guys. You know, that's the thing. Just keep it going. I mean, I think in the last year and a half, I've banned from my channel about four trolls. If it was a uh, other game, let's not say any other games by name, <coughs> wow, <coughs> then I would have... Um, <laughs> been banning that many like every hour probably so you know it's really it shows the quality of the community we have that to show so much love to each other and just the friendliness and the awesomeness how all the streamers host each other as well here on twitch as well it's just really awesome we raid each other pretty much daily as well so it's really really great so thank you guys thank you for everything thank you for having me and yeah that's now, uh, that's me. That's a hell of a now. That's a hell of a that's way a, to go out as a yes. guest. That's how yes. you go out as a guest. I got there we go. I, I went yeah, to right. do a soft clap, but I didn't want to interrupt before, so it looked like I was just golf clapping you. <laughs> there we go. I didn't want to interrupt. I didn't want to be rude. Uh, but no, thank you again, Mithri, for uh, making this episode about crafting possible. <laughs> Not sure. even like a guest is like being possible. So thank you again. And uh, then, of course, we have the co-host. You guys know him from every week. Samuel Sly, a.k.a. Sly the Fox, a.k.a. Sly, a.k.a. Gray Fox, a.k.a. You my boy, Blue Sly. You tell him where they can find you just like every week. A.k.a. Sly Squirrel now. because Yeah, I'm sorry, Squirrel. I Thank forgot. You. I, I got to change you. the YouTube description. Thanks for reminding me. Thank you. 
Um, yeah, you can find me on twitch.tv slash sly aka Gray Fox. You can find me on Twitter at Sly the Fox. You can find me on Behemoth Server as Fox Sly. Behemoth Server, aka the Cool Kids Stable. Happy. We need to get your. I got a level one there. He's That's what I'm talking about. We need to get your level one up. Like, like, okay, I'll get him every, level every... two. <sighs> See. You didn't specify what level This is why we can't. This is why we cannot. This is why we cannot do a dream team T nine run because Happy just doesn't want to. You know. It's not he, like you need me. <laughs> you guys we would to, like you to be there. I'll I'll do my best, slide. I got two months to do it, and I'm probably gonna <laughs> probably gonna want to do it at some point anyway. We'll talk. All right, we'll talk, Sly. We'll Thank make you. it. We'll make it happen. Make it happen. All right, and I am your other host, Michael, Mr. Happy Poporamo. You can find me at. I'm gonna do YouTube last because it's always awkward. <laughs> Twitch, Mr. Happy One Two Seven. Twitter, Mr. Happy One Two Seven. Facebook, Mr. Happy One Two Seven. YouTube, Xanort One Two Two Seven. Thank you, uh, Teenage Me, for deciding to do that so many years <laughs> ago. You guys, and it's why like you laugh at it every week too. It's like, is it that funny? It is still is it? because it's childhood. <laughs> It's childhood. I mean, at least I kept the one two two seven consistent. Right? It's not that. It's not that oh bad. It's not that bad, right? Right. All right. Well, on that note, guys, uh, that's gonna be a wrap for the show. Thank you so much for coming. We will see you guys next week. And until then, take care. Goodbye from me. Goodbye from Happy. And goodbye from Mithri. Yay, well, I, had to, I, had, I had to do. Bye. I had to try to do a Mithri. I had to try to do a Mithri. <laughs> Was that you trying to do? We're ending the show. No, 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 no. That was I didn't even <laughs> it wasn't, remotely it wasn't pick even... that up. Mm -mm. No, no, that's it. I'm changing the slide. Damn. I'm changing the slide. And the show's over. There we go. Three, <laughs> two, one. Boom. And that's a wrap. Uh, you guys can keep talking to the chat for one second. I just need to take a. Uh,